Greetings, peeps, and here's the second case of 2D projectile motion, the Falabola. All right, here's the situation. Golf balls hit at a velocity of 20 meters per second, an angle of 35 degrees, so we want to know a few things. What's the maximum height of the ball? That's delta y peak. Horizontal range, delta x, and the final velocity, which is velocity v and the angle. All right, well, here's the drawing. Here's the coordinate system. Positive direction for y up and to the right, positive x. And here we go, here is the V naught at 20 meters per second, 35 degrees, max height, delta Y, that's the peak. Um, and here's the range, delta X, that goes from um, the origin, where it's launched, all the way to its landing spot. In this case, it's a symmetrical problem where the height of the ball is going to be the same as the launching point. So when you swat the ball in golf, it lands on the ground and we're gonna pretend this is kind of a driving field so that it's completely flat, all right? No issues there. So let's take a look at the variables that make up this situation. <laughs> and so here's our chart of 2D projectile motion variables. We have the share to combine. Basically, it's the only information that we've been given is that we have a velocity, an original velocity of 20 meters per second, an angle of 35 degrees with respect to the horizontal. All right, so here it is drawn up here, angle 35, V naught 20 meters per second. So we've got a VX naught and a VY naught components that break up this uh, velocity at an angle. All right, so how do we do that? Remember that this is right triangle trigonometry here that represents the uh, vectors for velocity. So in the VX naught, which is the adjacent side relative to this angle over here, V naught times the cosine of the angle is Vx naught, which is 16.4 meters per second. Um, if you take the cosine and set your calculated degrees, very, very important. Vy naught is V naught times the sine of the angle, 11.5 meters per second. Okay, in black, again, before, uh, just like before, we have the known quantities even before starting the problem. That Vy peak is zero meters per second. Ay, which is g, is negative 9.8 meters per second squared, thanks to our quarter system up here, and Ax is zero meters per second squared. So the other variables we just filled in. So let's go do this, and our strategy is gonna be similar. We're going to find time to be able to figure out first the height of the golf ball in the air. <sighs> Hey, so let's find T peak from the vertical data. Um, I've got the variables written down over here, but of course, since you're great note takers, you have all these set up in the variables matrix for 2D projectile motion. Anyway, you've got it right in front of you. So um, I chose the equation VY equals V1 out plus AYT, the first one from our kit um, of equations, kinetic, uh, kinematic equations of motion. So we have T peak is negative VY naught divided by Ay when I solve this out, knowing that Vy is zero at the peak. All right, so this is the peak over here. And when I crank it out, I get 1.17 seconds. So that's how long, how much time it takes for the ball to reach its peak height. All right, so let's find delta Y peak using that information. So I decided to choose the um, second equation with time in A since we just found time. Then why not? Um, times T peak plus one half Ay T peak squared. Now I can plug it in right there if I were so inclined and get the right answer. Um, I decided to do a little bit of algebra to show you what can be done just by playing around with some of these variables, which is uh, uh, helpful because it actually will simplify the problem. And so this is kind of this, what some of the skill set that um, we'll be developing later on where we're substituting and coming up with simpler expressions, modeling expressions for the problem instead of big long ones like this. So we have a, I could factor out a T peak like this, T peak times the parentheses VY naught plus one F AY T peak. Um, what I actually chose to do was take this expression over here. Remember I said we're, here we have this that we can use for T peak in terms of VY naught and AY. Now, this is not crossing the streams. This is not the cardinal sin of mixing up horizontal and vertical information. I wanna be clear about that because this is actually giving us time, which is what we're sharing with the horizontal side, okay? So uh, I know that I've uh, been stressing very hard 
that you don't ever cross the variables from horizontal to vertical and vice versa. They are independent, but time is their only link. This is an expression for time. So what I did is I took this and I plugged it in here for T peak. And so I got negative VY naught squared over AY plus parentheses negative VY naught squared over 2AY, which if you do this, it would find a common denominator and work this through, gives us this simple expression over here, negative VY naught squared divided by 2AY. And when I crank this out, I get 6.75 meters. If you were to do this the other way, you would get the same answer, okay? Um, I just wanna show you that sometimes the variables can lead to places that make this even simpler and less prone to error, all right? So what we're gonna do is find the range next. So here we go. So now let's find delta x from the horizontal data and t total. It's important that we use t total because that covers the whole range. And because this is a symmetrical problem, what we can see here is that t total is equal to twice that of t peak. Uh, remember from the hang time video with the basketball players that uh, the sensors they used indicated that what goes up comes down at the same time. So the uptime and downtime are exactly the same when you land, um, when you jump off the floor and land on your feet. So in that case, um, this applies here as well. So if it's launched from the ground and lands on the ground, the time up equals the time down. Therefore, T total is equal to twice two peak, T peak. Um, and so that's 2.34 seconds from before, okay? Um, now I know that T peak is this expression over here, negative two VY naught over AY, which will come in handy a little bit later. So delta X is VX naught T total plus one half AX T squared, T total squared, this is zero. So it's just the, um, these two multiplied together, V times T. And um, if I substitute this in there and bring in the other values, I'll get the same thing, a range of 38.4 meters. So the golf ball went 38.4 meters from the, uh, the initial swing, okay, in this case, based on this problem. And so we get the range delta x. Well, what about finding v? That's the last thing. In order to do that, we have to find vy because we already have vx. We need to find the, the final velocity. Okay, vy equals vy naught plus ayt total. Okay, um, here's what I decided to do. The numbers would work. I could plug in the numbers here. I have them all and I would get an answer that you'll see in a moment. But check this out. This is very revealing when we use the variables that speak to the quantities themselves. So. I substitute T total with this guy over here, negative two VY naught plus uh, over AY, boom, that's in there. VY equals VY naught plus AY times that expression. Well, the AYs cancel. And so I've got VY naught plus negative two VY naught, which is negative VY naught. This is it, this is the expression. So VY equals negative VY naught, which is negative 11.5 meters per second. So what that says is in a symmetrical problem like this, that Vy starts off at a certain velocity and when it lands, it has that same velocity but in the negative direction. So it looks like this over here. We get the landing of the projectile, the angle in V and Vx naught is over here. That was uh, 16.4 meters per second. Negative Vy down here, negative 11.5 meters per second. Um, and so if I use the Pythagorean theorem, and the inverse tangent function, I get, guess what? 20 meters per second, which is the same velocity that we began with, um, at negative 35 degrees, our uh, WRT stands for with respect to the horizontal. So this angle here is with, with respect to the horizontal and it's negative because it's below it. And so that's it. A symmetrical problem means that we have the same ending velocity except with a negative angle. And that's what it is. I'm going to post the, uh, the matrix for you to summarize this whole entire problem. Thank you, Morad, out.